It's not a secret to the people in this room and for those who have followed this issue here in New Jersey that this issue holds great importance to me. And I appreciate this opportunity today to speak on the issue of gun violence, which I believe to be an epidemic and why these bills are so important. The issue became very personal to me following the murder of 21st graders and six adults at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut in 2012, a, a crime that was perpetrated with an assault rifle. As you all know, in 2013, I worked diligently on a 21-bill campaign to make our gun safety law stronger. We did so so that New Jersey families would not have to go through what the parents of Sandy Hook Elementary School experienced. We did so because we heard directly from the parents of the children who had been lost that the package of bills was the singular greatest thing that we could do to avoid these tragedies going forward. Their words ring in my head and in my heart and haunt me every time we wake up and see another tragedy. Some of the laws that were introduced in the 21 bill package were signed into law. They were done in a bipartisan fashion with Governor Christie. I applauded him then, I applaud him now for taking a strong stand on some of this legislation. Others were vetoed. And some of the most important pieces that were referenced by members of Sandy Hook, who were some members, some family members were NRA members, their parents were NRA members, some were former military, and were well versed on the use of these types of weapons. And they said that the legislations that we are, the bills that we're introducing today are critically important to the success of us to prevent this type of violence. Since Sandy Hook, more than 400 people have been shot in over 200 school shootings. Let me say that again. Since 2012, 400 people have been shot in over 200 school shootings, 130 have been killed. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 345 mass shootings in America in 2017 alone. A mass shooting is considered a shooting where four or more are injured or killed. The Gun Violence Archive is a nonprofit organization that tracks gun-related death and injury reports based on official records. The Dickey Amendment effectively bars the National Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, from studying firearm violence, an, an epidemic that the American Medical Association has since dubbed a public health crisis. Today is February 28th. It's the last day of the month, the 59th day of our year, and already this year there have been 35 mass shootings resulting in 65 deaths this year. Even more frightening, two of the five deadliest shootings in the U.S. history occurred in the span of just 35 days in Sutherland Springs, Texas, and in Las Vegas. 121,000 Americans were shot in 2015 alone. 121,000 Americans were shot in, 200, in the year 2015. Over a million in the past decade. On average, 96 Americans are killed per day with guns. I would continue, but the point I'm trying to make is that make no mistake about it, this is an epidemic. If you could imagine that we had a situation where 121,000 children were killed in a crib death, or 121,000 babies died because of a defect in baby formula, we would spring to action. A study conducted by two research from the University of New York and Texas State University analyzed mass shootings in 11 countries from the year 2000 to 2014. They found that U.S. has more mass shootings and more people cumulatively killed or injured than the other 10 nations combined. These 11 countries were the United States, Australia, Canada, China, England, Finland, France, Germany, Mexico, Norway, and Switzerland. These hard acts of terror span the entire country, occurring in cities, rural communities, and suburbs in almost every state. It's no secret that New Jersey has some of the strongest gun safety laws in the country. I think by last count, we rank third. But that does not mean that we can't do a better job to protect our citizens. The gun violence prevention package that we've worked on with my colleagues both in this committee and who sponsored these bills include legislation that would both protect the citizens of New Jersey, ensure public safety, and most importantly, protect the cherished Second Amendment. I stress that this is not, this is not about taking guns away from the responsible gun owner some of whom are my family members, but rather creating a framework around the Second Amendment, reasonable restrictions on this right that works for New Jersey and keeps our society safe. 
This package of bills will create a gun violence restraining order and a process for mental health professionals to report when a person possesses a significant risk of personal injury to themselves. We'd be joining five other states that have already enacted such legislation. According to news reports, neighbors and family members recall Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz killing squirrels with a pellet gun, trained his dog to attack a neighbored animal, posted an Instagram about guns and killing animals, and eventually threatened at least one teen by holding a gun to his head. He showed signs of psychological distress and had been, had been treated at a mental health clinic. In an, in an Every Town for Gun Safety study of mass shootings from 2009 to 2016, 42 percent of the attackers had shown warning signs of violent behavior. We're going to clarify our law so that this is crystal clear that this legislature does not intend to legalize the concealed carry law here in New Jersey. The argument that if more people carried a weapon, our communities would be safer is, in my opinion, not a way to fix this epidemic. There are already more guns in this country than there are people. It's not about the amount of guns that are in our communities. It's about the utilization of the guns and the type of weapons that are available. Since 2007, more than 900 people have been killed by a concealed carry permit holder for non-self-defense reasons. The Violence Policy Center reports to date that 31 mass shootings were committed by concealed carry permit holders. 17 of those were killed. 17 of those killed were police officers, and none of these killings happened in New Jersey. This does not mean that concealed carry permit holders are the problem, but it does mean that adding to those permits are not a solution. We included in this package legislation that would strengthen background checks by requiring background checks for private gun sales. Gaps in our current system provide a huge part in guns getting into the hands of wrong individuals. Currently, if you purchase a long gun or rifle through a private gun sale, you are only required to show proof of a firearm ID. No background check is currently required. According to a February uh, 2018 Quinnipiac poll, 97% of Americans support background checks. 97%, regardless of Democrat, Republican, or Independent, support background checks. My hope is, as we did in the last administration, we can find bipartisan support for this. This is not about being on the political right or the political left. You do not have to be on the political right or the political left to be on the right side of history at a time that is screaming for help. The package of legislation would also ban the possession of ammunition capable of penetrating body armor. These types of bullets are military in style and are not necessary for any type of civilian shooting. Rounds like these are not meant for deer hunting. They are meant exclusively for killing people and do not belong in our homes. Yes, we have passed legislation like this in the past. This legislation will allow us to modernize our law so that we can keep up with the ever-increasing technology and really a bullet that is much different than when we did this a few years ago. I'm also asking this committee to consider looking at smart gun technology. I know we're holding that bill today and we'll come back to that in the future, but we should not be resisting the advancement of technology that allows lawful gun owners to buy guns that are safe for them and for the community. Last but certainly not least, this package of bills would lower the ammunition magazine capacity from 15 to 10 rounds. This was the signature request from the parents of Sandy Hook. This legislation was modeled after a similar limit included in the 1994 assault weapons ban by President Clinton. It expired in 2004 after a sunset provision. A 10-round limit protects the right of law-abiding gun owners as well as the ability of hunters and sportsmen to engage lawfully in their pursuit, in the pursuit of their Second Amendment. According to the Washington Post, the federal ban in 1994 successfully and effectively reduced the number of high-capacity magazines on the street. The number of guns recovered by law enforcement containing high capacity magazines dropped by 9% during that ban, meaning that that type of high capacity that's been used in the, in the rash shootings that we've seen recently would not have been available, would have dropped significantly. I think what's also important to point out when we talk about the countries that had, pat, that had experienced these types of violence in the past, and in Australia in particular, we talk about how in 1994 there was an assault weapons ban. When there was a mass shooting in Australia in 1996, they passed very progressive legislation very similar to what we have done here. They did buyback legislation, they did an assault weapons ban, they did magazine clip capacity, they did background checks. And from 1996 until today, they have never experienced a single mass shooting since that original date. I know there's a lot of emotion in this issue. I know that people are 
worried that this is trampling their Second Amendment rights. I know that there is distrust, that this is a slippery slope. I can sit here today and tell you that I would never support a piece of legislation that would take away the right of someone to own a handgun in their home to protect themselves. I would never support a piece of legislation that would take away the right of a lawful sportsman to have a gun that is reasonable for use in pursuing that sport. And I just truly believe as we sit here today, when you look at the worldwide statistics from other industrialized nations that have passed this type of legislation and seen the level of gun violence in those nations compared to ours dramatically less, and yet they still preserve and protect the right of gun ownership, that we are missing something. And I'll just close with this. You've heard the chairwoman read off a, a tragic list of events that have happened just over the course of this year. And I, I come back to, again, the haunting words of the families of Sandy Hook, where a father sat with me and said, I used to come home and watch these tragedies like Columbine. And I would sit on my sofa. And I'd watch the news, and I would, and I would be emotionally impacted by the events that I saw on TV. And then I would huddle up my son, and I would pick him up, and I would take him to soccer practice. And I would go about my day. And he said, I will never huddle up my son again and take him to soccer practice. And when you hear the laundry list that the chairwoman read off, I think much like that father from Sandy Hook, you worry about the tragedies that we see, but there is still this thing inside of us that says, that's never going to happen to me. When you hear that laundry list, I can tell you that if it hasn't happened here yet, it's because we've been blessed. And it is, our, it is incumbent upon us to act. And while we don't have all the details, I can tell you that as we sit here today, there's an active investigation in South Jersey, in the 6th District, in a community that I live, and in a school that all of my children have attended. And there was an arrest made. And it is but for the grace of God that it has not happened here yet.